Hey everybody, I have had this question come to me a couple of times recently. People say, hey, I, I've got this object online and I brought it into Blender and it looked really good and then I exported it as an STL and all of a sudden it don't look so good anymore. It looks kind of jaggy and facety and this isn't what I wanted. I wanted it to be smooth like it was looking. So what's going on here is that Blender... Okay, remember that Blender is not a 3D modeling program. It isn't a 3D animation program. So a lot of what it does is specifically for what goes on the screen. It's designed to make things that look on the screen really nice. So one of the things that it does is it will sometimes take an object, which let me select this object and go into edit mode and show you. Look, there the facets are still there. It's super facety. The geometry of it is facety, but it's making it look good by kind of fake smoothing it out. And so the first thing that you should do is anytime you import something, especially like an FBX file or another file format that keeps the this sort of data in there, is to right mouse click on the object and choose Shade Flat. That will make it so that you will see the underlying geometry as it is. Let's do that on Suzanne over here. Click Suzanne, right mouse click, shade flat. And now the illusion has gone away. We are no longer shading it in a smooth way. Okay, so you look at this and you say, well, okay, fine. The illusion's shattered, but this isn't what I want either. I want it to be smoother. Okay. Let's make it smoother. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to add a modifier. And modifiers are done here in this little wrench panel here in the properties panel. Add a modifier. And then I need to go down because I make my interface a little bigger for you. But yours might be right there. Subdivision surface. That's what we're looking for. Click that. And then you just increase the levels on your subdivision surface. And look at that. Suzanne is looking really good. Now, if you go into edit mode, you'll notice that it's still facety but it is actually adding geometry to it after that. That's what a modifier does is it doesn't alter the base geometry, but it alters geometry after that. So if you exported this right now, it would be super smooth. And nice thing about the subdivision surface modifier is one, you can turn it off and it's still there and just work with your mesh. And then before you're done, you turn it back on and you export it that way your computer's not getting bogged down with all those points, or you could work at a, a lower level where it's still a little bit facety, but it's not going to bog down your computer. And then just before exporting, crank it up so that it's super smooth. I do that a lot of the time. Let's grab this knot over here. This toroidal knot here is what this co is called. Let's add a subdivision surface modifier to it and see what happens. So if we add that subdivision surface, did you see what happened here? I'm going to turn it off and turn it back on a couple of times so you can see what happens. But turn, turning it on, do you notice how the knot is getting smaller? And that actually makes sense because the subdivision surface modifier is essentially like sticking your object in a sander, in a, a, a you know, using using sandpaper on it and smoothing the whole thing down and yes if you take something with sharp corners like this and sand it down what are you going to be left with something smaller and if this is acceptable if this is good good go with it and for the most part the reason why we didn't see it as much in suzanne it happened for sure here turn it on go into edit mode you can see how she's kind of smaller but because there was more points to work with, it shrunk less. So the more complex the geometry is, the less you'll see that shrinkage. This geometry, this knot here, is actually super simple underneath. So the shrinkage is dramatic. Can anything be done to reverse the shrinkage? Well, the answer is yes, but be careful with it because it might cause problems. Here's what we do add another modifier to it after the subdivision surface. This one is called displace. So I got to, now I got to go up to find my displace modifier. Hit displace. Now, normally you can displace to an image texture and it'll make parts up, but we're not going to do that. We're going to leave it with no default image texture. And the result of that is that it just 
displaces everything by whatever the strength is. So assuming that your your scale is applied here, so hit control A and apply your scale, your strength will represent how many millimeters bigger it will be. So if I change this to five, this is now five millimeters bigger than it is without it. Here, let's look at a side view right here. So if I if I put a little mark right here with my with my grease pencil, this is basically where the edge is now. And then turn it on and mark here with my grease pencil. Now turn it off. Well, it's actually a difference of only two and a half, but two and a half on the top and two and a half on the bottom is five. I don't know. You know, either way, it's close enough to to being uh, correct that we're just going to go with it and I'm not going to worry about my marks right there I'll deal with that later but be careful with with this displace modifier because if you could even see it right here right now these objects are self intersecting on themselves which will make it so that 3d printers won't like to 3d print it so make sure that you take your exported mesh and run it through 3d builder or netfab or some other program to just Go over it and make sure it's nice and clean. Some slicers will actually identify and say, Ooh, something bad with this mesh. Can I fix it? And go yes with it. That's Idea Maker and Flash Print. And I think Prusa Slicer uh, can correct meshes. So if they can correct the mesh, great. The, you just recognize this might cause some bad meshes because you've got the object kind of passing through itself. But yes, you can correct the shrinkage with a little bit of a displace. And I'm just going to take it back to one. I think that if we turn off all these modifiers and turn them back on, that to me looks like it, it's it's a little bit bigger than the flat here, but it feels about right to me. So there you go. There's the trick for taking a mesh that's been visually smoothed, turning that off and turning it into an actually smooth mesh. So thank you guys very much for your questions. I hope that this helps. If you guys have other questions about 3D printing that I can help you with, go ahead and ask them. Let, let me know about them. A uh, great place to do that is in the comment section here on YouTube, but I'm also on Discord. And if you jump on my Discord and ask questions, I, I love to help people out there or on Twitter. So thank you guys very much for watching. I really appreciate it just everything that you guys do. I hope that this helps you and I'll see you next time.